Space and time merge to form a single entity known as space-time, and everything moves at the speed of light across space-time. Even a motionless object moves at the speed of light, but only through time, not space. It is difficult to move across space at the speed of light because the item must be pushed from traveling in the time direction to moving more in the space direction. This is challenging because an object's mass grows as it travels faster and faster. Scientists have been attracted by the concept of light speed travel for decades. And now, NASA just admitted they've created something so advanced it can reach light speed. So stay tuned, as we're about to bring you this great information. The speed of light is regarded as a fundamental natural constant. Its relevance extends well beyond its function in characterizing an electromagnetic wave characteristic. It is the universe's sole limiting velocity, acting as an upper constraint on signal transmission speeds and the speeds of all material particles. As it comes to light, it goes straight from point A to point B. Yet, the trajectory may seem curved to a distant observer. The geometry of space is somewhat bent around a powerful gravitational source such as a black hole or even the sun. One example is the confirmation of Einstein's idea of distant starlight being bent by the sun's gravitational potential. The theory, published by Einstein in 1915, expands on the concept of special relativity, which he had published ten years previously. While special relativity claimed that space and time are inexorably linked, it did not recognize the presence of gravity. This was seen during a solar eclipse in 1919. Albert Einstein's explanation of how gravity influences the fabric of space-time is known as general relativity. According to special relativity, different observers have distinct time gauges. Yet special relativity does not entirely explain our whole cosmos. General relativity, its older sibling, provides the tools we employ to explain cosmic concerns. When we examine the universe's history through the lens of general relativity, we discover that the universe becomes more extensive with time. It used to be smaller and will get more prominent in the future. There is a clear relationship between a specific point in time and the extent of the universe. This enables us to build a universal clock, a timepiece, that has been ticking for almost 13 billion years. Indeed, the Earth's speed through the cosmos affects the clock. Still, using general relativity methods, we can effectively take that out and get the actual age of the universe. According to NASA, Einstein spent the decade between the two publications finding that extremely enormous objects stretch the fabric of space-time, causing a distortion that appears as gravity. During the scientific revolution, scientists started to reject Aristotelian scientific doctrines that had been considered orthodox for centuries. This included rejecting Aristotle's theory of light, which saw it as a disturbance in the air and adopting the more mechanical idea that light was made up of individual atoms. They developed the Parker Solar Probe in 2018 to investigate the Sun's outer atmosphere, or corona, and to help answer some of our star's most fundamental issues. The probe was meant to study the solar wind, a stream of charged particles that emanates from the Sun and impacts the behavior of planets and other objects in our solar system. It was designed to fly within 4 million miles of the Sun's surface to examine the flow of energy, the heating of the solar corona, and what causes the solar wind to accelerate. The probe was outfitted with solar sails, antimatter propulsion systems, and iron fosters for faster movement. Despite the numerous attempts, the probe could only reach 430,000 miles per hour, leading to the birth of the New Horizon spacecraft. Harold Sonny White, a NASA engineer, claims to have discovered a way to travel faster than the speed of light. Based on a simple mathematical relationship in Einstein's general theory of relativity, White claims to have discovered a new way to build a faster-than-light warp drive. While the design is inspired by Star Trek, the basic concept is based on physics. The warp drive design is based on an exotic form of matter that no one has seen experimentally, combined with a quantum effect that is too small to work in a spaceship-sized device. Because it is not made of matter, a warped space-time bubble can move faster than light in general relativity. Consider this bubble a moving sidewalk. It transports you faster than you can walk, but your leg muscles still control how quickly you can walk on the rubber surface. The sidewalk, in the case of the space-time bubble, is moving faster than light, while objects inside the bubble still obey the speed limit. The second theory is based on the Casimir effect. When two metal plates are put in a vacuum, the quantum fluctuations in the cavity between them provide an attractive attraction. In specific calculations, the Casimir effect indicates negative energy in the area between the plates. 
Still, no matter how you read it, it's a negligible quantity in comparison to the size of the apparatus. You'd need the equivalent of turning Jupiter's mass into energy to create a spaceship-sized warp bubble utilizing the Casimir effect. White's research is primarily unpublished, and he claims he can't reveal any details because they are protected by non-disclosure agreements. This study is stretching the boundaries of physics to investigate the impossible. It has been investigated as a possible means of breaking the speed of light barrier by warping the fabric of space-time, rather than increasing the kinetic energy of an object, as stated by White. NASA developed the Advanced Propulsion Physics Laboratory for further research, dubbed the Eagle Works Laboratories. It is an advanced propulsion physics laboratory within NASA's Johnson Space Center. NASA JSC established Eagle Works to study propulsion technologies required for human solar system exploration over the next 50 years and interstellar travel by the end of the century. This effort directly supports the NASA OCT TA-02 In Space Propulsion Roadmap's Breakthrough Propulsion Goals. Breakthrough Propulsion is a specialized development area that seeks to explore and develop a deeper knowledge of the nature of space-time, inertial frames, quantum vacuum, gravitation, and other fundamental physical phenomena, with the overall goal of developing advanced propulsion systems and applications that will revolutionize how NASA explores space. David Burns of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama is confident he can send us to the stars with no propellants. He designed the helical engine, which uses mass-altering processes known to occur at near light speed. Consider a box on a frictionless surface to grasp the concept of Burns' engine. There is a rod within the box down which a ring may move. If a spring within the box pushes the ring, it will glide down the rod in one direction, while the box recoils. As the ring reaches the box's end, it will bounce backwards, and its recoil direction will also change. This is action-reaction commonly known as Newton's third rule of motion. It usually limits the box to wiggle back and forth. Yet Burns wonders, what if the ring's mass is significantly more prominent in one way than another? The box would then get a stronger kick at one end than the other. The box would accelerate ahead because the action would outnumber the response. Thankfully, physics agrees with this change in mass. According to Einstein's theory of special relativity, things acquire mass as they are accelerated towards the speed of light an effect that particle accelerators must account for. A simplified version of Burns' plan would be to replace the ring with a circular particle accelerator, in which ions are rapidly accelerated to relativistic speeds during one stroke and decelerated during the other. Nevertheless, Burns believes that ditching the box and rod and using the particle accelerator for lateral and circular movement makes more sense. In this case, the accelerator must be fashioned like a helix. It would also need to be around 200 meters long and 12 meters in diameter, needing 165 megawatts of electricity to create just one newton of thrust, roughly the same force required to write on a keyboard. As a result, the engine could only achieve relevant speeds in the frictionless space environment. If the EM drive works, astronauts could travel at unprecedented speeds and distances. At the same time, mankind may go onto Mars in days rather than months. This is because the speed of a spaceship is limited not by the quantity of fuel it carries, but by the rules of physics. However, we must first overcome two significant obstacles to utilizing the EM drive for interstellar travel. Finding a reliable energy source to fuel the EM drive's motor and the effects of such rapid acceleration on the human body. Despite these obstacles, NASA is certain that the EM drive represents a significant advancement in space travel. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you'd like this next video here. Thanks for watching.